Today I'd like to talk about five-sided surfaces. You should never build a five-sided surface. There are tools that will allow you to build one, such as fill surface. You can see here I have a five-sided surface potential. I'm going to go ahead and around and build the surface. Select OK. Now I'm going to analyze this quickly. And if I look at poles, you can see how complex this is. If I look at knots, you can see tons of knots, meaning internal seams. So this is a very complex, heavy surface that doesn't even meet our requirements. Now, I have not even bothered putting in the constraints because the last thing I want to do is make this more complex just to try to show you something. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the surface and show you the right way to go about building this. So I'll go back into surface, and the first thing you need to do is go into studio surface. We should build two four, uh, four edge or four boundary surfaces. Now surfaces like to be built with four boundaries, four edges. The system will not innately, naturally build five or three-sided surfaces. It will show as a three-sided or show as a five-sided surface, but the internal map will always result as a four-sided surface. So the best thing that you can do is build surfaces four-sided that overlap to represent that five-sided hat that you use. So here I'm going to build from this edge to this edge. And you'll notice that the tangency constraints aren't because I picked the edge. I'm going to go into guide curve. I'm going to go to this curve. And I want to pick this surface for my tangency and then deselect these two. Now that I have that selected, you can see there's my surface, builds across nicely, tangent all the way around. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say G2, G2, and see if we can get away with the G2 constraint down here. We can. Select OK. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a couple of bits of reference elements. I'm going to create a surface or a curve, not a 3D curve, I apologize. I want to build a curve that sits on that surface. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to build offset curve and space. I want to pick that curve. I want to pick this space and then drag this down to where you need it to be. What I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to build another spline that comes in and wraps around to that curve off of that edge. So with that built, I'm going to go ahead and put in a curve. We'll use a bridge. I want to bridge from this edge to this edge. There we go. To this edge. Now, for this, I'm going to go into constraint faces. I want to select a face. I want to lay down on these faces. So what happens is, is I'm building a curve. It's a tangent that wraps straight and through. You'll see G1, G1, and it sits on that surface. With that, now I can go back into surface. I can go into my studio surface, and I'm going to build from this to these faces. To this, to this space, and then for my guides, I'm going to use this, and you'll see it wants to put in a G2 continuity, but we know we don't have G2 over here, so I'm just going to go back to G1, and then I'm going to add one more, this boundary, let me swing this around, just because I can, and at this point, I'm just going to simply select OK. I'm going to trim the sheet to this curve. And as we look at this, we can see that I have two surfaces, right? This is trimmed back. This one wraps and lays down on top of the other. If I analyze this now and I go back into analysis and I pick these surfaces and say show poles, you'll see far less complexity on those surfaces. Okay, we go to a wireframe view so you can see it. 
still relatively complex, but far less complexity on those surfaces. If I go into now uh, reflection and I pick these to analyze, select, we'll go to that one, select OK. Let me pick my surfaces and remove my poles and have a look. You can see. I now have very smooth, very clean transitions. If you need to, you can go back into this offset and make a modification to this. As you move this, you can see in this area that my lines are shifting. So you can now tweak this to make this look as good or as bad as you want. So I can take this now, and I can move this, say I move this back over here. And you can gun sight it and take a look at it and see exactly what's going on with that shape. So that's really the right way to build a five-sided surface. You never actually truly build five sides, you build two four-sided surfaces.